April is so far away. I know my kids are working hard, but how will I know how they're measuring up to the test before April? Does this sound familiar? It's the inner monologue of most educators. So how do you know if your students are on track to meeting the long-term goals you've set for them? An excellent resource for educators is to use interim assessment. It's a way to check student growth toward a predetermined long-term goal, like CASP or LPAC testing. Interim assessments are different from the formative process used during instruction to help figure out what's next, and they're different from the summative testing events that are held after instruction stops to look back on how learning went. It turns out, interim assessment is not a one-size-fits-all process. In fact, it's incredibly varied. Checking on student growth can be anything from a writing prompt that a teacher gives their class two times a year to a standardized assessment that some districts might choose to use, like map testing, CASP interim block assessments, or local assessments, like the ones built in Illuminate. Because everyone wants a picture of student growth, and in so many different areas, it can be challenging for schools to know how often and when to administer this type of assessment. Used in the wrong way and at the wrong time, these can create test anxiety and burnout. At the core, interim data uses multiple data points to monitor student growth, allowing educators to identify patterns in student learning. Hemet Unified has several built-in opportunities for educators to examine data and to collaboratively make decisions about grouping, pacing, enrichment, and remediation. Some of these include teacher collaboration time on Wednesdays, AVID site team meetings, release days, and other professional development time. The decisions made during these times should guide instruction and intervention decision. So what should interim assessments look like? Well, the answer depends on how the data is going to be used. One example might be a teacher pausing their instruction to give students a writing prompt. The teacher wants to know the student's progress in understanding how to write for different audiences, which was part of the learning outcomes goal. The students' responses demonstrate what they've learned so far so the teacher can make instructional decisions. So the teacher is using the data in a formative way, but they're also using the data to measure how students are progressing compared to a benchmark they've set in their learning outcomes goal. When a whole grade level takes a benchmark test, for example, the MDTP math assessment, the teachers and students are again pausing instruction to benchmark their progress. This time, they're looking at students' rate of progress toward grade level standards and expectations in mathematics. Prior to the interim assessment, teachers have identified the purpose of the assessment and how they will use the data. This is the critical first step of any assessment process, and unfortunately, all too often, overlooked. Interim assessment relies on multiple data points to reveal trends and patterns in student performance. Because interim data can be aggregated, teachers can look for patterns or trends. Interim assessment often leads to excellent reflective questions that can be addressed during teacher collaboration time by the team. For example, are all of our students growing at a sufficient rate? What do the trend lines say? Where are the gaps? Teachers and teams can then check on growth. They can measure progress when they administer the same assessment at another point later in the year. For example, SRI or Lexile testing in the fall, winter, and spring. Standardized interim assessments can help check whether students are meeting benchmarks on the way to summative goals and generally in one to two class periods. If they're used, it should be no more than one to three times per year. Any more than that will not help students. Interim assessment can be driven by a single educator, a team of educators like a grade level or a department. It can be led by the school or the district. In any form, interim assessments measure progress against benchmarks. And no matter what, educators need to be cautious that the interim assessments they choose to administer are high quality, are not duplicative of other testing, and not used in isolation for high stakes decision making, like honors classes. And also, for each interim assessment, what's measured has to be consistent each time it's given. Otherwise, you won't get comparable data. And whatever interim tool educators are using, the purpose of the assessment and how the data will be used should be clearly identified by the teacher or team.
Each of the different types of assessments support coherence within a high quality and aligned instructional system. Our instructional strategies, supports, and assessments all have a singular focus on improving student outcomes. It is critical that interim, formative, and summative assessments coherently and purposefully use assessment information to directly impact student achievement. For more information about interim assessments and how to use them strategically in support of every child, please contact your department chair, data team lead, AVID site team member, site and district-based instructional coaches, as well as any site administrators.